If you have been working with clients and servers, socket is a familiar term. We leverage TCP protocol to communicate with different servers or clients. In the new age of reactive systems, we are going to see what is our socket and how you can leverage reactive streams to create client and server applications by leveraging this new technology called our socket. So the agenda is straightforward. We are going to see what is our socket and why we need our socket. We are also going to see when to use our socket and finally we will close up by overlaying the R socket implementation in a gaming kind of an application and you can compare how we can leverage R sockets in developing a game something like Fortnite or PUBG. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. What is OrSocket? OrSocket is a binary open source protocol which was created by Netflix initially and it's now open sourced. Netflix leverages OrSocket for a lot of client server communication within their microservices architecture. The main difference between OrSocket and the traditional TCP or WebSockets are OrSockets add more flexibility and it also adds reactive streams so that you can leverage our socket in a way you wanted it to be in a traditional http request and response opening a connection and closing the connection is a bit costlier and that's why people go towards web sockets but with our sockets you can have these socket connections leveraged for stream processing as well so why do we need our socket in the first place there are different interactive modes in which our socket operates if you understand these interactive modes, you can definitely see when you can use it. The first one being request and response. This is a traditional HTTP kind of a request where we just send a request and then we get a response and we close the connection. So what happens in a traditional client server communication is you have a client on the server. We send a request saying, okay, hi, the server responds to us with a hello. And this is similar to how you process your messages using REST APIs where you just send a request and then you get a response over HTTP. Our socket supports request and response as well. The next one is the request stream where you can request the server for a particular type of message or whatever domain it is. And the server will now respond with multiple messages. And these could be streaming as well. For example, if let's say you want to stream some health endpoints or health checks from the server to the client. You can definitely first trigger the server saying, hey, I'm looking for health checks from your application and the server can now stream the health of the application every second. The next one is the fire and forget. Fire and forget is useful when you want to do subscription or you want to enable or disable some functionality within the same protocol. For example, here I'm just showing an example as a buy. So the client says buy and the server doesn't need to respond. So that's where fire and forget is helpful. And the final interaction model is the channel or bi-directional communication. In the bi-directional communication, both the server and the client can request and respond. For example, let's say the client said hi to the server, the server responded with a hello, and now the server calls back the client saying what now? So this also could be possible within the channel or the bi-directional model. So our socket supports all these four different types of models. So you can develop your client and server contract in such a way that you can have a mixture of all these. Now, when do we need all these, right? So when do I use our socket? Because there are a lot of functionalities which our socket is providing, but do I need it really? As I mentioned before, in a traditional client server architecture, you can definitely leverage our socket. But in order to understand a bit bigger use case, let's understand it with a different example. So let's imagine I have an application server which connects to different systems or different microservices within my ecosystem and it also connects to a different data source. I have a web application or a mobile app which is connecting to this web or the app server and I need to get real-time updates from what's happening. So let's consider the example of a market watch. Now I have my mobile app and I have my browser which is going to be registered to this particular app server so that I can get instant notification on what's happening within the exchange server. So if let's say I register to Google stock, I can register it from my device to the app server and app server can recognize if there are any changes in the backend systems and it can push those changes into the UI. 
you can do that real time using the same R socket connection because you can have a request response kind of a setup and you can achieve it. Another typical use case where you can leverage R sockets are when you want to have a Twitter kind of a web page or a UI where you don't have to refresh the page and you get new messages instantaneously when there are new messages. So you can have reactive calls to your client side whenever there is a message from the server side being pushed. So you can leverage R sockets in those use cases as well. Now let's look at R socket in a different streaming application kind of a example. Obviously just a disclaimer, this is a example. I don't think this architecture overlays with the exact architecture of a gaming application. I've just put it down just with my understanding of how you can leverage R sockets in creating a game. Obviously in a game, you will be having multiple clients. The request or the clients or the customers could be using the desktop application or they might be using the mobile application. They all connect to something called as a game engine. Obviously, we are going to leverage our socket because we are going to get interactive mode so that we can request and re get response from the game engine from these desktop applications. The game engine connects to different services. One could be the automated AI engine, which predicts or moves the computer game into the game engine. And also we have an analytics engine, which is going to connect to some data store so that it can collect statistics of the game. When there are multiple players who are connected to a game engine, they need to have a way to have their connection to be established and they need to be secure and they need to be connected and they can do request stream. They can also do bi-directional, etc. So how can we achieve it? You can definitely achieve that using our socket. You can have desktop applications connected to the game engine, mobile applications connected to the game engine. And if there are any interactions from, let's say somebody moves or shoots one player to other player. So from the mobile device, the request goes to the game engine. From the game engine, it, it can go back to your desktop application. This is another classic use case of R sockets. Obviously, there are multiple use cases for leveraging R sockets. If you guys remember anything, do let me know in the comment section below. Obviously, I don't have any hands on for this particular video, but I would like to know if you guys want me to make a video on R socket with Spring Boot. I'll just summarize what we just discussed. R socket is an open source messaging protocol created by Netflix, which can be used for communicating with client and server using the TCP protocol with a layer five or layer six framework, which is called as R socket. It has multiple interaction modes using which you can have different flavors of communication protocol between your servers. You can leverage R sockets for streaming data from your server side to the client side, or you can leverage it for any streaming application where you can get real time updates and you can respond to those updates real time. I hope you were able to understand what are R sockets. If you guys want me to try out R socket with a hands on example, do let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.